my dudes. Yeah, what's happening, man? It's art day. It's Wednesday. Today's question comes in from Khaled E. Uh, Khaled E is 15 years old and says they wasted one year when they could have been drawing. Uh, they got a lot of homework and uh, a lot of study work to do for school. And it's also, it's exhausting to try to keep up with the schoolwork. It's exhausting to try to like uh, make time to draw when you're a teenager. I know this. I know this from my own experience because I was, a, I was an artist when I was in high school. And it's like I lived it and breathed it. And so like I wanted to give a little bit of insight into some advice that I would give to young people who are in high school who are thinking, man, I really want to be an artist when I get out of high school. I really want to position myself for a career as a concept artist in video games or as a 3D modeler or as an animator, somebody who wants to build a career path and it's not too early to get started and it's also not too late by the way if you're in your 20s this is also relevant advice i think so me in high school i'm what you might call a socially awkward fella <laughs> i was i was the kind of guy who didn't get invited to parties because i was always drawing but certainly whenever anybody needed some artwork for their uh for their comic book or for their tattoo or whatever else you know project they were making i was the guy that they contacted i was the guy they reached out to in high school and so i but i was always really busy doing my own comics all i wanted to do was make my own world like all i wanted to do was draw comic books every day and uh, make video games eventually. You know, that was my big long-term goal was to start a video game studio. Anyway, I was so committed and so determined to do these things that I had my first comic books published when I was uh, 16 years old. If you want to be an artist when you're uh, further along in your life, when you get into your 20s, you know, you got to start now. You got to start ASAP. And I remember every summer, I could not wait. I could not wait to show off my new skills to my art bros it, at school in high school I couldn't wait to come back after summer break and show them how I've leveled up the new challenges that I had faced because every waking moment that I had I would find a way to draw I kept a sketchbook with me everywhere I went and I took classes that allowed me to still work on my drawings and work on my comic books and work on my stories so I was always writing or drawing in those sketchbooks I still have those old notebooks I was very fortunate enough to have an art teacher who was very understanding. And she looked at what I was doing. Her name was Miss Hales, by the way. And uh, she would look at what I was doing and she was like, hey, you're going to be a professional comic book artist. Like you can do this. So you can just work on your comic book in art class. So you better believe by my senior year, I took two art classes every single day and a study hall class, which also allowed me to uh, work on my comic and draw during study hall. Although to be honest, a lot of times in study hall, I would pass out. I would actually take a brief nap because I was only sleeping four to maybe five hours a day. And then I'd work on, on my comic even while I was on the bus on the way to school. Now, the thing that got in my way is that I had to work a part-time job. I was either mowing lawns or I was working in fast food. I still did that because I needed to buy art supplies. I came from a very, very poor family. So like it wasn't available to me. I didn't have a lot of advantages. I didn't, we didn't have digital technology. We didn't have like paints and things are expensive. Drawing equipment was expensive. Buying a bottle of ink, if you drop that bottle of ink, that's a painful experience, not only because you lose your page that you've been painting on and drawing on, but you also have to go out and buy another $5 bottle of India ink. And if you're only making $4 an hour, well, that's an expensive venture. <laughs> you, know? you also have to pay taxes on that. Anyway, start doing the thing that you love. Now, the advantage that you guys have, and I, I, hear, I hear a lot of people saying, oh, no, it was easier for people back in the day. And I, I don't agree with that. I think it was really hard. <laughs> I think it's actually easier now because now you can tune into YouTube. You can tune into uh, people like myself who teach, you know, workshops on how to do this sort of thing. I have a ton of like workshops on the actual process of concept art, not the fluffy stuff that you hear from some of these um, more entertainment kind of YouTube art channels, but like the real day to day task breakdowns of what concept art for games is and like what kind of a task you would get and how you go about meeting that challenge and what software you're using and how much time you get to work on it and the kind of feedback you might get and how you handle that kind of feedback, all that stuff that you don't really get from just your casual YouTube channels. And like you have a ton of these people like myself who are eager to teach you. And, and so you have that available to you. We did not have that. We did not know what it was like the fundamentals of animation. Nowadays, 
like I don't teach that, but I know other artists out there do teach that. Like people who've actually worked in the uh, animation industry, you can learn from a pro. You can get their workshops and you can actually uh, digest everything as if you were taking a class from them, which is absolutely phenomenal because you have the power of the internet. You have the power of just being able to download or watch the videos of that person explaining it. And it might be boring. It might be frustrating. It might not be all the sexy, exciting stuff. Cause like, you know, at least for myself, when I was in high school, I got, I glamorized the hell out of it. And I just thought, Oh, I just want to do the fun stuff. I'll let somebody else do all the in between stuff and all the hard work. It's like, no, 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 no. My advice to you when you're young is like, learn all that stuff. So like when you are applying for a job as a comic book artist, for instance, like you'll know that it's not just about drawing splash pages and covers. It's like, they're going to want to hire people who do the stuff. That's actually like the hard work, like making a scene where a character is just drinking coffee, make that an interesting scene, like choose dynamic camera angles and be able to convey drama and subtleties in characters, expressions and things like that. All the subtleties and, and subtleties are going to be what's going to get you the job, learning all the real gritty details, the fundamentals of the skill that it is that you want to learn to do. So if you want to make indie games, for instance, get in there, man, download unity right now, download Epic games, uh, unreal engine right now. And like start doing some video tutorials. Even if it's the basic stuff, commit yourself to a large chunk of time. What you might not realize is when you're in high school, you actually have more time than when you're an adult. When I say adult, I just mean when you're outside of your parents' house or when you're actually paying your own rent and when you're actually trying to buy your own clothes and pay for your own food and when you're actually buying your own car, when you're actually out on your own and you maybe even have other people that are relying on you, you're not going to have time, especially when you're young. If you're, if you're like 24 and you've got a family, like you're not going to have any time to try to pursue this. It's going to be really hard compared to your life in high school where you only have to go to school for six and a half, seven hours a day. So my number one advice for young people is don't waste time. And I know it seems like you got all the time in the world, but don't waste time. If you can find a way to mix your social life with drawing and with making games or whatever it is that you want to do with your life, if you want to make games, find buddies, find bros, find uh, pals in your neighborhood, in your in local environment, in your local area that you can get together with and actually physically sit at a table with them with your laptops or whatever and start to make things, do tutorials together, challenge each other and go like, oh man, I figured out this new effect in Unity or oh, I figured out this new code or hey, have you seen this thing? Or hey, I was watching this article by these other developers after they released their game and like start sharing that information with that group of people. That way you get that social experience. You don't want to become isolated. You don't want to neglect your social skills as well. Networking with other people who are enthusiastic about what you're enthusiastic about, that's going to establish your career as well. I had the benefit of starting to do comic books with my uh, art bros in high school. And we ended up like we've been friends for 30 years now. And, you know, now we're doing comic books again and it's exciting and it's fun. We have so much history of challenging each other and, and seeing how each other's uh, skills have developed over the years. And it's it's amazing that you can actually in some cases, some of your friends will become very successful at this. And then you find opportunities from that as well. They'll want to bring you along because they know you're genuinely enthusiastic about it. Uh, dating. Don't do it. I know you're going to be tempted. <laughs> it's like the hardest advice to hear. Like when I was in high school, yeah, man, I was girl crazy, man. I was, I was so fascinated. I just wanted to date girls all the time, but you know what? It's a huge distraction. Don't do it. Save that stuff for later. It's going to be a lot more fun in your twenties. Anyway, when you've got a little bit of success and you're already on your career path that you want to go on. Okay, maybe just a little dating, but keep that in check, man. You don't want that to distract you or pull you away from your, your dream in life. Usually, I'd say like 99% of the time, the person you date in high school is not going to be the person that you're going to end up with later because ah, you're going to hate to hear this. I would have hated to hear this, but like you're going to change, man. You're going to change a lot. I really don't want this channel to be a dating advice channel. So I'm going to stop there. I'm just going to say, watch your distractions. Don't let yourself get caught up in YouTube. Don't let yourself get caught up in discord or uh, Twitter. Unless of course, if it's the aquatic moon discord channel where we talk about art all the time and we've got art challenges going on over there and all kinds of, of um, uh, shared resources and information and, and uh, all kinds of like tutorials and things where people are passing around info and helping each other out. It's a good old time that's focused on art. It's focused on what you might be interested in pursuing for your career. So stick with those things. Okay. But don't, don't let them get out of, out of check. You got to make sure that you're spending the majority of your time developing on your skills 
and finishing small projects. If you were 15 right now and your dream is to be a video game developer, you need to finish a video game. You need to learn how to finish a small, small scale, maybe just a 2D little mobile game or something. Finish it. Make that your goal for the summer. Give yourself two or three months, even if it's awful. Even if it's awful, just finish that thing, okay? And then you can assess, ooh, what did I learn? What did I do wrong? Ooh, what could I do better? Should I do a sequel? Should I do another one? Maybe challenge myself in a different way. Maybe up the challenge. Maybe try a different engine or try it in 3D, you know? Face those challenges head on and get, it, get out there and actually finish them. That's how you're going to really assess your skill level. And that's how you're going to impress potential employers as well. If you're coming out of high school and you've already made three little small mobile games, mm-hmm. You're an easy hire. You know, that is that is somebody that I would hire. It is so essential that you finish a product of some kind, whether it's a comic book, whether it's a web comic, whether it's <laughs> an indie game, whatever it is that you hope to achieve. If you're make if you want to get into animation, you better have a short animation that's even a minute long. Set a goal for yourself, a small goal, and finish that puppy before you graduate. That's your goal. Focus all of your energy on doing that. Then put it out there, enter it into contests, show it around. You'll be surprised when you're only 18 years old or 17 years old and you make something that's exceptional, you will get media attention. And it is absolutely the best thing you can have on your resume. Even better if you learn how to sell that stuff yourself, then you never even need to get a job. You just build your own company. And that is my advice. So what you're watching me draw in this video is a comic book. Yes, that's right. I've been drawing comic books for like 28 years now, man. Oh my God, since I was just... Well, since I was a young, a young artist and uh, come back after working in video games for all these years. And now I'm doing Creed Reimaginary. This is the story about a 17 year old comic book artist who chronicles his adventures of facing off against nightmares in a dream world dimension. And if you want to know everything I know about how to make a comic book at 17 or since I was 17, well, guess what? I made a workshop for that. And if you want to know everything I know about how to design worlds for video games and do concept art for video games, guess what? I got workshops for that over on my Gumroad channel. Right now I'm doing a big, big spring sale. So don't forget to use that code on the screen above. And dudes, don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, I'll catch y'all. Mind you on the bond. And ciao, baby. Oh, yeah.